What does it mean? That, what does it mean? Um, a hidden defect. What does that mean? I can't explain that now because we won't take it in this book. We should take it, inshallah ta'ala, in the next book, which is Nukhbatul Fikr. Ibn Hajar mentions it there. What it really means, a hidden defect. Good. Um, so that this hadith in Bukhari, it doesn't have a hidden defect. Last but not least, that we need to look at, which is what? Does this hadith contradict another narration? And the answer is no. So this hadith, we will say, Tawaffarat jami'u shurutu siha all of the conditions of authenticity are present and there is no, there is no uh, uh, weakness of it. So this hadith is sahih. Whilst I'm on that point, I have to mention something very important, which is, the memorization is two types. When we say that the narrator has to have memory, it's two types. There's a memorization which is called dabtu sadr the memorization of the chest. Some individuals, they are able to keep it in their hearts and they don't need to look at anywhere. They, can, they have their memories on point. Good. What does it mean that he can keep it in his mind? When we say that he's got memorization of the chest or he's got memorization of the top of his head, what does that mean? It means any time he requires it and he needs it, he is able to bring it out. He won't look for it. Whenever he needs to use it as an evidence, he would say, حدثني عبد الله بن يوسف قال أخبرنا مالك عن محمد بن شياب الزهري عن مالك عن محمد بن عن مالك عن محمد بن شياب الزهري عن مح سوري قال حدثنا سوري Muhammad ibn Jubair ibn Mut'im from his father Jubair ibn Mut'im قَالَ سِبِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ سَلَمَ يَقْرَأُ صُورَةَ الطُّورِ I heard the Prophet recite Surah Al-Tur. Then he's able to bring it out whenever he needs it, straight away. He doesn't have to look for it. Very good. It is called وَهُوَ أَنْ يَحْفَظَ الرَّاوِيُّ مَا سَمِعَهُ حِفْظًا يُمَكِّنُهُ مِنْ إِسْتِحْضَارِهِ The minute he took it, until he gives it, he's got it with him and he can bring it out whenever he needs it. The next type of memorization is called a person who's memorized it from his book. He's memorized it from a book. He hasn't got it with him. He has it in a book. In order for us to say that he is a person who has got memory of the book, it means that he, me he knows his book inside out. He has to memorize his book. That's a bit tricky. It means that if somebody goes and tries to tamper with his book, he can recognize and say, this wasn't in my book. He knows his book very well and that he is able to protect his book from the fingers of those who want to tamper with it. And that he knows his book and no one can fool him with his book. So he knows his book very well. The author after that says, Imam al -Bayquni. So we finished Sahih right now, inshallah. We're going to move on to the next line, the fifth line. وَالْحَاسَنُ الْمَعْرُوفُ طُرْقًا وَغَدَتْ رِجَالُهُ لَكَ الصَّحِيحِ اشْتَاهَرَتْ The author here, rahimahullah, he mentions the hadith which is Hassan. He says, وَالْحَسَنُ الْمَعْرُوفُ طُرْقًا وَغَدَتْ The hadith which is Hassan. وَالْحَسَنُ الْمَعْرُوفُ طُرْقًا وَغَدَتْ The hadith which is Hassan. Hassan means a fair hadith. Fair. Or a sound hadith. A hadith which is Hassan is the one whose root are known. The root of it and its chain is known. Good. It is known. It's known. And what? Rijaluhu la kasahihishtarat. And its narrators are not as famous as the Sahih, the authentic chain of narration. The narrators are not as famous as the authentic chain of narration. They are they are not as that. They are not as famous as they are. Now, this line. Bayquri said is questioned and it's incorrect what he has said. And the correct way of saying it is Wal Hasanul Khafifu Dabtan Idgadat Rijaluhu La Kasahi Hishtaharat. And that's an istidrak uh, put by a doctor Abdul Sattar Abu Ghudda. He put a istidrak, he corrected it. 
which what it means the hadith which is hasan is not al ma'roof for turqan wa ghadat it's not ma'roof it's not that the tradition of the hadith is what it's known that's not the that's not the right way it should mean that the chain of narration the individuals that are in it their memorization is slightly deficient compared to the authentic narrators that's it the only difference between the authentic hadith and the hadith which is hasan is the narrators of the authentic hadith have full memorization whereas the narrators which are in the hasan they have slight deficiency in comparison to the authentic their memorization is not 100% 70% 80% good very good and it follows it with the other conditions the other conditions are still present there the chain of narration has to be connected so for both of them for the authentic and for the hadith which is sound both of them the chain of narration are connected the same both of them cannot have what they can't have any hidden defect both of them can't have any shuduth they can't oppose no opposition there can't be anyone who's opposing the hadith they're both the same on that also both of them their narrators have to be reliable so they share that the same those four conditions are the same for both of them but the only thing that they're different on is which it is the memorization the people who are authentic their memorization is high whereas the ones whose hadith are sound their narrations are their memorization is not 100% okay an example for that is an example for that is the hadith of Abu Hurairah that Imam um, uh, the hadith of Abu Hurairah that an Imam al dhahabi brought in his book al mizan al Iqtidal because of the because of the narrator in there that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said aktiru min shahadati an la ilaha illallah increase in the utterance of la ilaha illallah say a lot say la ilaha illallah la ilaha illallah as much as you can say it. why قبل أن يحال بينكم وبينها before there comes a obstacle between you and its utterance ولقنوها موتاكم and your dead who are on their deathbed sorry your 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 family members or the Muslim individual who you come onto who's on their deathbed the messenger said لقنوها Teach him to uh, make him utter the shahadatin. Say Shay Shadullah Ilah Shadul Hamsa. Say Shadullah Ilah Illallah. Shadullah Ilah. Keep making him say Ilah Ilah Allah. This hadith is Hassan. This hadith is Hassan. Why is it Hassan? Because in the chain is a man by the name of Dimam Ibn Ismail. Dimam Ibn Ismail. And this individual, Dimam Ibn Ismail, this individual, Dimam Ibn Ismail, he is, as Imam Dhabi mentioned in his book, Mizan al Atidal, he said, Salih al Hadith, Layyanahu Ba'adhum Bila Hujja. His Hadith is Salih. It's good, decent. Some scholars, they weakened him without any proof. Layyanahu Ba'adhum Bila Hujja. Some of them said he's light, he's, he's, he's weak. But Imam al Dhabi said without evidence. Abu Zur'at al-Iraqi, not Abu Zur'at al-Razi, Abu Zur'at al-Iraqi, in his book, uh, or, or sorry, in the book, Dhaylu al-Kashif, he said that Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal said about, Imam ibn Ismail, Imam Ahmad said about him, Salih al-Hadith, his hadith is good. Abi Hatim al-Razi said, Sudduq, he's truthful, but he's muta'abid, he's a worshipper. Now, some of you may not know these terminologies that the scholars of Jarh wa Ta'adil, they use. What does he mean he's a worshipper? The reason why he, he's referring to him as a worshipper is because the worshippers were known to what? They were known to mix up hadith. And because worshipping has overcome them, and they've just become worshippers, uh, they will just narrate a hadith which are weak. Uh, they will mix things up. Their memorization wasn't on point. So Abu Hatim is critiquing him here. He's saying he's a truthful person, meaning he doesn't lie. His adala is good, but he's dabt. His memorization is what? Isn't that all that? 
And Imam al-Nasai said about him, La ba'sa bihi. There's no problem with him. No problem. So, Ibn Hajar, and Imam Ibn Hajar, rahimahullah, in his book, Taqreeb al tadhib what he does is he brings all of those who critiqued him, and he brings all of those who praises him, and then he brings a fair judgment out of it, and he says something like, Sudduqun wa rubba ma akhta. He is truthful, and sometimes he does mistakes. So if that's the case, because of his memorization, he might do a mistake. This hadith, لا ينزل حديث عن درجة الحسن. The hadith does not go below the standard of Hassan. It doesn't go below that level. But if that individual wasn't in there, the Imam Ibn Ismail, the hadith would have been Sahih. Because of his memorization, the hadith went low. Okay? Very good. So we've taken an example of hadith Hassan and we've taken its definition. So hadith Hassan again means what? هو الحديث الذي تصل سنده. It is the hadith that the chain of narration is connected. بنقل العدل with narrators who are reliable. They're reliable. But the الذي خف ضبطه. His memorization is slightly deficient. Low. Isn't that high? Good. من غير من غير شذوذ. But there is no contradiction. There is no opposition. Ah, they can't be. Also ولا علة. And there can't be a defect which is which is hidden. Very good. وَكُلُّ مَا عَنْ رُتْبَةِ الْحُسْنِ قَصُرْ فَهُوَ الضَّعِيفُ وَهُوَ أَقْسَى مَنْ كَثُرْ Then the Shaykh then says after that, وَكُلُّ and everything. Everything what? Every hadith that goes what? وَكُلُّ عَنْ And every hadith that falls عَنْ رُتْبَةِ الْحُسْنِ Every hadith that falls short Below the rank of what? Of this hadith which is sound, the hadith which is Hassan. Any hadith that falls below the sound hadith, it doesn't reach that rank. It, it doesn't reach being Hassan, it's below it. Ah. He said to you, then this hadith is weak. فَهُوَ الضَّعِيفُ This is weak. It is what? It's weak. So any hadith that doesn't reach the rank it doesn't reach the rank of a sound hadith. Qasur, it shortens, it falls short. What do you do? فَوَضَّعِيفُ It's weak. وَهُوَ أَقْسَى مَنْ كَثُرْ And it is many types. And there are many subdivisions that fall under it. وَهُوَ أَقْسَى مَنْ There are many subdivisions. So he's talking about there are many weak types of narrations. Hadith which are called weak, many types. Example of hadith which is weak is that which is being narrated by Imam Al-Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah, Al-Darimi, Ahmed, Ibn Khuzayma. They all narrated it. On the authority of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. That the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, he said, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجُلَ If you see a man, يَتَعَاهَدُ الْمَسَاجِدِ فَاشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِالْإِمَانِ If you see a man, Always going to the masjid, always participating in the jama'ah. He's always there. He's always in the front row, part, taking part. They said that the Prophet said, "Fashhadu lahu bil iman." Iman. You can testify that this person is a believer straight away. You're a mu'min, akhi. You're a mu'min. This hadith is weak, daif, because in the chain of narration there is an individual by the name of Darraj. Darraj ibn Sam'an Abu Samh. Abu Samh. He's in the hadith. Imam al Dhahabi said about him, Darraj, this man Darraj ibn Sam'an Abu Sahm. Abu Samh, sorry. Abu Samh. He said he is what? Darraj Kathirul Manakir. He has a lot of a hadith which are munkar. What does the word munkar mean? We're going to come to it inshaAllah ta'ala. He has many a hadith which are Strange and weak. Imam Ahmad said, Ahadithu manakir. All of his ahadith are manakir. Ibn Hajar said, Sudduq. He's a truthful person. Fi riwayatihi in his narrations from who? An Abi al Haytham. Sudduq. Fi riwayati an Abi al Haytham. Ba'fun. Sorry. He is reliable. Ibn Hajar said, He is reliable. He's a truthful person. But in his narrations from Abil Haytham, he is weak. In his narrations from Abil Haytham, he is weak. 
And this hadith that we just brought right now is a hadith of Abil Haytham in which he narrated it from. The Raj, ha, uh, Ibn Sam'an, Abu Samh. This hadith is from the hadith which he, he narrated it from Abil Haytham. So it's weak because of that one individual. The hadith is weak. Very good. The author then says, وَمَا أُضِيفَ لِلنَّبِي الْمَرْفُوعُ وَمَا لِتَابِعٍ هُوَ الْمَقْطُوعُ The author goes into um, the eighth line. And he says, وَمَا أُضِيفَ um, Anything that is attributed. وَمَا أُضِيفَ أُضِيفَ means what? Anything that is attributed. للنبي to the messenger. Anything that is attributed to the Prophet وسلم, is what? It is the tradition which the scholars of hadith would call it marfu'u. Marfu'u means risen. So anything that is attributed to the, anything that is attributed to anything that is attributed to the messenger is called marfu'u. That's the word for it. Anyone who says the Prophet said this, he's just done raf'a right now. The word marfu' is when somebody rises something up, puts something up. I Meaning it's risen up to the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. وَمَا لِتَابِعٍ هُوَ الْمَقْطُوعُ And anything that's ascribed to a tabi'i. A tabi'i is the student of the companion. It's an individual who met a companion, but he had never seen a... He never saw the Prophet. He saw the companions, but he never saw the the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he's the student of the companions. So um, the hadith that's ascribed and attributed to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is called marfu' and the hadith which is attributed to the tabi'i, the student of the companion is referred to as what? Al-maqtu' It is referred to as what? Al-maqtu' Maqtu' means phrased. It means what? Phrased. And we'll, we'll take that inshallah ta'ala now. Um, when something is ascribed to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are ascribed to him by one of four ways. These are the four types of attribution or it being attributed to the Messenger is one of four. These are the four. It is either a statement which is being attributed to the Messenger. Number one. Number one is what? A speech is being attributed to the messenger by saying that the messenger said this. It is what? A statement that is being attributed to the messenger. Number two is an action that is being attributed to the messenger. For example, a companion may say that I saw the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam doing this. So he's attributing an action to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The third thing that would be attributed to the messenger is a consent. Something which he consented to, he agreed to. I mean, it was done in his presence, alayhi salatu wasalam, and he showed uh, affirmation, he agreed to it, and did not show any form of rejection. This is called a taqrir. That's a way of... So meaning that this was done in the presence of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this is an evidence to say that he didn't reject to it and it's a proof. The fourth type of attribution is what? The fourth type of attribution is the Prophet's description, how he looked. Which is, for example, the hadith of Kana The Prophet وسلم, he looked like this. He looked like that in the books of Shama'il al Muhammadiyah. That he wasn't sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was white, mushrabun bil humrah, he was white, it was, uh, it was added to it a, a reddish color. So he wasn't black, alayhi salatu wa salam, and he wasn't pale. He was one who had a, a, a brownish complexion, alayhi salatu wa salam, but closer to the whiteness, alayhi salatu wa salam. Meaning it was white that was red was added to it. Also, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wasn't what, excessively tall. And he wasn't excessively short. All of these are descriptions that have been attributed to him, alayhi salatu wasalam. Also, a description is his character. His character. That which Aisha said about him. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ أَحْسَنَ النَّاسِ 
the Prophet was the best people when it came to etiquettes and manners. وَكَانَ خُلُقُهُ الْقُرْآنِ And his etiquette and his character was the Qur'an. He was the walking, uh, uh, um, sorry, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, uh, he lived by the standards of the Qur'an. To use that word, he was the walking Qur'an is incorrect. Because it was somehow ascribed to the Qur'an that the Qur'an is created. So to say that the Prophet was a walking Qur'an is trying to say that the Qur'an was created. What you say is that the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam is, uh, um, was alayhi salatu wa salam, was the Qur'an, was his character, his etiquette. He lived by the Qur'an, ins and the outs. Whatever the Qur'an ordered, he did it. Whatever the Qur'an prohibited, he stayed away from it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, going back to what I was saying, the things that are attributed to the Messenger are four types. Speeches, actions, his consent, and last but not least, action, uh, sorry, descriptions or characteristics. Um, that's the first uh, part of the uh, poetry. It's called the Shatr al Awwal, which is Wama Udifa lin Nabil Marfu, Wama li Tabi'in huwa al Maktu. Tabi'i is who? A Tabi'i is the one who met the companion, who met a companion. And he met a companion in a state of Iman. He, stayed, he saw the companion and he was a believer when he saw the companion. But he didn't see the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not see the messenger, alayhi salatu wa sallam. He met the companions. This person is called a tabi'i. Whatever is ascribed to the student of the sahabi, whatever is ascribed to a tabi'i is called maqtu' phrased. In English it's called phrased, maqtu' What is it that can be ascribed to a tabi'i? Only two things can be ascribed to a tabi'i. It is either speech or a action. So for example, we say, huh? when Imam Hassan al-Basri was asked about the prayer behind an innovator, can you pray behind a person who's an innovator? Hassan al-Basri said, Salli wa alayhi bid'atu. Pray behind him. His innovation is on him. Why do you care about his innovation? Go and pray behind him. So Hassan al-Basri, that's a statement that's ascribed to Hassan al-Basri. Hassan al-Basri is a tabi'i. He met, a, he met the companions, but he didn't meet the Prophet. Also an action. An action that's ascribed to a tabi'i is called uh, uh, it's called maqtu' al-fi'li. Which is for example, um, for example saying, and Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz was one who recited uh, the last ver this verse of the Quran before he died. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz he recited the ayah tilka daru al-akhirah naj'aluha lil-ladhina la yuriduna uluwan fi al-ardi wa la fasada wal lil muttaqin and he was reciting that verse until his righteous wife Fatima was listening to him and she said he read it so many times until his voice went with the recitation so this is an action that's been ascribed to a tabi'i. Good. The author then goes on to say, وَالْمُسْنَدُ الْمُتَصِلُ الْإِسْنَادِ مِنْ رَاوِيهِ حَتَّى الْمُصْطَفَى وَلَمْ يَبِنْ The author now is talking about something called a musnad. A musnad. A musnad is a, a hadith. The author says, وَالْمُسْنَدُ The musnad is a hadith al-mutasil which is connected. The chain of narration is connected. The musnad is a hadith which its chain is connected and it's not broken. Until what? And uh, Until to the narrator. To the one you're ascribing it to, the hadith is connected. isnadi. The chain of narration is connected. Mirrawihi from the one who's narrating it to Hatta uh, al-Mustafa until the Prophet. The hadith is connected from you to the Prophet. This hadith is called Musnad. So two things he's, he said. It is ascribed to the Prophet and it's also authentically ch transmitted. The chain of narration is connected. That is called a Musnad. There are also other meanings that a hadith which can be called a Musnad. But the author doesn't mean it here. The, the author here only means two things. It is the hadith which is marfu' and it's, and it's what? It is also mutasil. That's all he wants. It has to be ascribed to the Prophet and it also has to be 
authentically ascribed to the Prophet. If it's authentically ascribed to the Prophet, and it is the Prophet who, who is being ascribed to, then this hadith is called a Musnad. But if a hadith is authentically transmitted or ascribed to a Sahabi, it's never called a Musnad, according to uh, the author here. There are other meanings that the word Musnad means. The Musnad, it has another meaning. It is a hadith which compiles huwa kitab jumi'at fihi marwiyat. It's a book that compiles the narrations of every Sahabi individually. And that is Imam Ahmed's Musnad. Imam Ahmed, if you open his Musnad, you will find all the hadith of, uh, and all the hadith of Abu Bakr in one place. All the hadith of Umar in one place. All the hadith of Uthman ibn Affan in one place. All the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib in one place. And he's, this is called a Musnad. All of the hadith of each one Sahabi. By itself, separately. But the author doesn't mean that right now. He means the other meaning, which I mentioned, which is the Marfu'ul Mutasili Sanadan. Good. وَمَا بِسَمْعِ كُلِّ رَاوٍ إِسْنَادُهُ لِلْمُصْطَفَى فَالْمُتَّصِلِ The author here, what he has said means, or he's talking about uh, something we already spoke about, which is, what does it mean the hadith is connected? What does it mean ittisal, connection? That's all he's explained to you. He, tell, he told you that, I mean, he tells you here, he said, وَمَا بِسَمْعِ كُلِّ رَاوٍ يَتَّصِلِ and whatever, and whatsoever, is connected by the hearing of all narrators. Every narrator, he hears it from the other. Huh? Then this is called a فالمتصل. To the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is called a muttasil. Every hadith, uh, which is connected from every narrator, he narrates it from the other person. He met him and he narrated it from him. And the other one narrated it from the other one. And the other one narrated it from the other one. Until the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that this is called connection. He's just referring to the mutasir, it is sinah. And we already spoke about that before. But here, it's, 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 it's a bit incorrect. Why is it incorrect? He's trying to say that it is only called mutasil. the hadith is only called connected when it's ascribed to the Prophet. And that isn't the case. If a hadith is connected to the Sahabi, it's called Mutasil. If it's connected to the Tabi'i, it's also called Mutasil. So that's why Sheikh Abdul Sattar, Abu Ghudda, he done istidraq on him here. And what did he say? Ma bi sam, he said, Wa ma bi sam'i kulli rawiya tasil isnaduhu lil muntaha fal mutasil. Ha, lil muntaha to the ending. That's why it's important. Whoever you're finishing it at, it matters. Whether it's a Sahabi, whether it's a Tabi, it doesn't matter. As long as it's connected to whoever you're attributing this statement to. That is called Mutasil. Whether it's the Prophet, whether it's a Sahabi, whether it's a Tabi, it doesn't matter. You see? That's why we said, Isnaduhu lil muntaha fal Or more like the reason why the Shaykh Abdul Sattar said it, which is correct.